isn't that a beautiful sight? Welcome and thank you for joining me on this video. This is a subject matter that I absolutely adore. The magic and beauty and perfection of nature. And I've got a beautiful palm tree in my viewfinder because if you can just picture orchids going up that trunk, roots dangling everywhere, going down the trunk, attaching themselves, eventually blooms. But we're not here to talk about blooms. We're here to talk about the perfection of a layman. I know that sounds weird. And in future videos, I'm going to try and make a conscious effort to use that pronunciation, the layman. As a matter of fact, the real technical proper term <laughs> is Belayman radicum. Let's just stick with Belayman for this point in time. I don't want to ruin the subject matter. It is a bit of a geek video, but then again, I am a geek about Belayman. I am fascinated by how they perform, how they function, how they grow, and how they decorate our orchids when they grow aerial roots. And the diversity of the layman on top of all of that, what they are capable of, how they have evolved, I am telling you, geek moment has arrived. When I look at this palm tree, which is not on my property, but I look at it, it reminds me of when I was back in Kenya, growing orchids on trees, not giving them any heat, any attention, not knowing anything about fertilizer, none of everything that I talk about and I'm doing in my orchid growing hobby currently, they were just in the trees growing as divisions that I was getting from other people's gardens. The reason being, was the roots. The Valaman is the one-all be-all of our orchids. It is so complex, but yet so simple in its function. No wonder that orchid aficionados go crazy when suddenly out of nowhere, supposedly out of the side of a stem, out of the base of a new growth, out of literally nowhere, we see bright dots of nubbins of roots appearing. And it's our eyes just, well, mine open up wide and I have this yay moment. And then, uh-oh, now I have to protect the roots moment. And a certain amount of anticipation drops to a certain level of gotta be careful from here on in and protect those roots. So the layman is my subject matter. I know this is a long-winded intro. I told you it was going to be geek-like because I deal with my aerial roots on the daily because I have a lot of spraying to do, a lot of misting to do because I don't have humidity. So let's get into the layman radicum. Thank you for your interest, for your time. And I hope that you find this video just as interesting and maybe come out of it at the end look at your orchid collection and go, dang, so that's what you're all about. <laughs> so, the layman radicum. So according to Britannica, it is a multi-layered epidermis or skin, which consists of non-living compact cells with lignified strips of secondary walls. These cells provide support, prevent water loss, and assist the plant in absorbing water. The layman helps also in absorbing nutrients from the atmosphere. So that is quite a revelation in itself, that one sentence. Thank you, Britannica, for letting me get the proper terminology. Otherwise, this would turn out to be way too layman. Anyway, so here we are, that last sentence. It also helps in absorbing nutrients from the atmosphere. Let that sink in. Despite the fact that we say orchids get trace amounts of nutrients from all sorts of combined residue that washes off bark, etc., where the roots have attached to and when it rains, truth of the matter is that velamen never stops working or serving its purpose while it is not raining. It is constantly absorbing trace amount of nutrients 24 seven. In my opinion, that explains why when we fertilize our orchids, the quantity of our fertilizer is always considered higher than what the orchid would get in nature. But is it really? Now, consider the Valaman radicum is absorbing nutrients 24 seven in nature. Even if in minute quantities and compare that 
to the amount we choose to apply to our orchids once a week, or as in my case, when the reservoir is absorbed, it's definitely something to think about, isn't it? Because when we speak of rain washing down anything that came from above the bark, the decayed matter, the poop, and all that wonderful natural goodness that the velamen then absorbs, we also think of extended periods of rain where eventually those nutrients that are higher concentration after a period of no rain, as it continues to rain, the solution that comes off the trees and falls onto the velamen starts to diminish and get down to next to zero. But that is only when it rains. Velamen absorbs nutrients from the air 24 seven, rain or not. And now imagine that, including the rain, and then when it's not raining, how high are the actual quantities of nutrients that the layman is actually providing to the orchid all week, day, night. Now, I don't have those specific numbers. Of course, that varies with regards to the environment, where is the orchid located, and all that fun stuff. But just consider that. So when we speak of our fertilizer doses, well, the orchid doesn't get that much in nature. Do we really know that? My maximum fertilizer rate is 300 parts per million based on the orchids at every single watering and based on what the orchid is actually doing. 300 parts per million is nothing compared to what other plants would normally get, but it is considered sort of a happy medium levels. So just consider the amount of nutrients an orchid is absorbing via the Velamen radicum 24 seven, because that is what it is doing, getting it out of the air. The minute particles in the atmosphere as they land on the aerial roots, the velamen takes that up and uses it to provide and care for the orchid. Amazing, huh? So another thing about when we look at our roots, we also say, well, that root is dead or alive, depending on what we see the status and the structure of the velamen is. Actually, the velamen tissue is dead. The velamen around the root is filled with air, which gives it that grayish color or white. It's dead material. The water absorption through that dead tissue is achieved by imbibition into a biological porous material, but the velamen radicum envelops the aerial root and comprises only of one or two, possibly up to several layers, depending on the organ in question. Given the adverse conditions, the Velanum radicum will also start to collapse if there isn't sufficient humidity in the air to keep absorbing levels of moisture to maintain the cell structure. That's also quite a bit of a mouthful right there. And yes, I'm reading from the notes I took down because I want to make sure that I don't go down a rabbit hole seeing as I'm so fascinated by the layman and aerial roots and what I see on the daily, what the characteristic of the root is doing based on what the orchid is actually doing. Yes, I know, I go there. This is my turf, my jam. I love watching and observing my roots. So anyway, we do not want to compromise the functionality and the efficacy of the layman. So, there are several ways to protect the velamen of our orchid roots by going easy on the fertilizer, knowing when humidity levels are too low and taking measures to correct those humidity levels by humidifiers or misting or setup adaptation to counteract the environmental shortcomings as we grow our orchids to the best of our ability and also contradictory to anything that anybody would consider possible in how we can grow orchids. Another way is also to not keeping the roots so saturated, the opposite is true, that the velamen cannot dry out and rot within itself, which seems a little bit counteractive as well, considering I grow in LECA and self-watering, but the velamen is so adaptable to its environment that it will change its characteristics to continue doing its job based on what it finds available. So aerial roots on the same orchid, the velamen has a different characteristic and chemical buildup in comparison to the same orchid's roots that are growing in the pot. And that is why different cultures, different media make it possible to grow the same orchid 
because of how the velamen responds to its environment. Oh gosh, this is so fascinating. I should have done this video a long time ago. So another way to maintain the health of the velamen is to keep the chemical makeup of the root tip intact by avoiding touch. Our hands have oils which could stop roots growing from that point onwards. Doesn't mean the root won't maybe branch elsewhere, but the health of the root tip is paramount to then get healthy velamen to develop on the exterior of that new root tip as the root tip extends. And touching it, bruising it, or anything like that is going to, more often than not, inhibit further root growth from that one specific growing tip. Watering at too low of a pH that burns the chemical makeup of the root tip is also one way of destroying the velamen as it is developing on the outside of the root tip. So the safe pH range, in my opinion, is 5.8 to 6.5. We can go lower, we can go higher. I'm giving you my opinion of the safe range that any water touching a root, a root tip, be it fresh, be it with fertilizer, should never be below 5.8. Eight. Acidity is more detrimental than alkaline. And that is why sometimes when sphagnum moss is going over, even though we pH at a reasonable range, the acidity of the sphagnum moss touching the root tip will be a detriment to the growing point. So a safe pH range, 5.8, 6.5, to prevent any kind of damage to the growing point of the root tip because we are protecting the future velamen. There's another thing to avoid damaging root tips and the chemical development of the velamen is to avoid any form of abrasion, be it as we repot, be it from the wind with a wobbly orchid in the pot, moving the orchid around as a root tip grows. That is also why we say the orchid needs to be secure in the pot because more often than not, that little tidbit of information is referring to the fact that we don't want any abrasions on our root tips because any abrasions on root tips will stop the root from growing. And another way, keep the velamen healthy and happy as it is developing around the root tip is of course, to avoid a too dry atmosphere. Again, by using humidifiers or occasional misting. On some roots, if you look really, really closely, you can see a very, very minute sheen covering the root tip as it grows. This is part of the future hardened off velamen radicum. As it already coats the root tip in the process of extending, sometimes, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but sometimes when you clean roots in the process of repotting, the root tips actually have a slippery feel to them. And that is the coating of the immature velamen acting as a barrier already protecting the structure within so that it can continue growing. I don't know if you've noticed any kind of slipperiness in your root tips after repotting. Let me know in the comments below, but don't remove that. And if you feel it, enjoy it, know what's happening, move on quickly <laughs> so that you don't destroy that little slippery protective covering. Always bear in mind how sensitive the velamen actually is because it is just a fraction of the root structure. In actual fact, it only factors in about a 10% of the rest of what is actually surrounding the root inside. That would be the exodermis, the cortex, and finally, right in the center, the conducting bundle, as they call it, the root. And then what fascinates me as well about the velamen that is what we see. Everything inside we can only see when we take a cut off a root and then we can sort of see the different layers. But what we see is just beautiful to the eye. So much interest. You get the metallics, you get silvers, pure white. Who doesn't love a pure white velamen coming out with a bright green root tip? They can also be fuzzy textures for grabbing onto things. They are, in my opinion, truly a work of art and the magic and perfection of nature at its best. Oh, fun fact. Root tips come in different colors 
especially near Phoenicians. That's why some are more coveted than others. But if, for example, you have yourself a root tip exposed to a lot of light, the root also produces anthocyanin in many cases to protect the growing velamen, which is developing where the light source is and could possibly damage the growing tip. So the anthocyanins kick in. But then if you look at the other side of the root, the same root tip where there wasn't any source of light, it can remain green. Incredible, huh? Oh my goodness. If you're still here with me, thank you so very much. You see, me and roots, oh, geek out. So having given you all this intricacy about the velamen and what I find so fascinating about it, you can see why it is so important and a fragile structure that needs to be protected. Keeping the velamen healthy, basically reverse everything I've just said about don't do X, Y, Z. Reverse that, maintain the right levels of humidity. That is paramount. If you have the right level of humidity, then no matter what happens afterwards, usually won't happen if we make a mistake minus the pH. Too low a pH, too much acidity will destroy the layman no matter your humidity levels or not. Now, here's some food for thought, right? We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Here's some food for thought. Think about this. When you look up the care of an orchid, you're researching it and you're thinking, can I get it? Can I make it happy? Do I have the right setup for it? Right climate? When you see in your care sheet, that the orchid requires X percentage of humidity as part of its care requirements, what do you actually think that is pointing to? Why is that percentage when it's mentioned of relevance? Will the blooms look nicer if we maintain that humidity for X orchid? Will the leaves or any other structures grow better if we maintain the preferred levels of humidity for that orchid? Why the percentage of humidity? And why is that always a factor? Well, let me tell you that in my opinion, that when you read that percentage of humidity as a guideline from till minimum max, it is all about what the velamen needs to perform its function at optimal level for the health of the aerial root to then support the needs of X orchid. Does that make sense? Let me repeat that. The humidity requirements, in my opinion, are there as an indicator to give us an idea as to what humidity level the orchid requires in order for the velamen to perform its function at optimal levels. And that is why humidity is paramount because it is what determines the overall health of the orchid. It's about the functionality of the velamen radicum to operate at its best. So next time you research orchid care and see the humidity requirement of an orchid, know that more often than not, it's all about the velum and radicum. Unless, of course, you have other suggestions about humidity levels and why they are always mentioned in a care guide. And that would interest me. So let me know and everybody else know in the comments below, as far as you are concerned, why there is such emphasis on humidity levels other than possibly the optimal function of the velamen. So there's another thing, <laughs> still not done. It will also respond differently from orchid to orchid and depending on what it is actually in the process of doing. So some velamen have this Teflon effect as I call it, especially as the root grows, literally doing the opposite of absorbing anything all of what I've just mentioned, what it does, absorbing nutrients 24 seven, it's doing the opposite. As it is growing, it's actually repelling water. Some orchid roots that are already established, the velamen will actually start changing the characteristic and start absorbing the moment the root tip starts growing again, or the root branches in another part of the already existing root. The velamen is phenomenal for something that is supposedly dead tissue. It responds, it reacts based on all these factors and humidity being fundamental. The point of branching on an existing root, an established root or a new root, usually happens where the water droplets take longer to drip off, where the velamen softens easier due to the extended moisture. Now, bear that in mind. 
If the water has too much fertilizer in it and evaporation is faster than the rate of absorption, then those are the points where the root burn will appear, or better said, the Valaman radicum burn. <laughs> when we look at orchid roots, we look at the whole structure. It is the root. We're going to keep it simple, but this is orchid lingo, and this is part of the series. So the Valaman radicum is what will burn when we say root burn. But that is also at a point if the absorption is slower than the outside evaporation effect. So you can see again, percentage of humidity, everything has to balance. So here's a top tip. If you do not know the ideal level of humidity your orchid prefers, let's just say you have one in your collection and this video has now sort of got you thinking, well, I don't know this, this is a cross, this is a hybrid, this is something I bought in the supermarket. This is something that I got on the garden center sales table. I don't know what it is. So top tip, if you do not know the level of humidity your orchid prefers, observe the characteristics of your velamen as you water aerial roots. If you have the Teflon effect, chances are your orchid requires higher humidity than a root of a layman that absorbs the moisture quickly. So my example for this is any kind of Brassavola root that I have growing aerial, so strong on the Teflon effect when the new roots are growing. It is insane. How am I supposed to keep this orchid hydrated if the Valaman is not even ready to absorb my water? It needs high humidity because once again, the layman absorbs nutrients from the air, not just water. So that'll give you a great indicator if you have a Teflon effect on the new roots. And usually, you know, 90% of the time, all new roots will have that effect, but there are some that extend way beyond the base of the orchid and they are still not absorbing water. That is your indicator that this orchid requires high humidity. In comparison, a Holcoglossum kimbillianum, as in my case, I can see the velamen changing its characteristics the moment an old established root starts to branch or a root tip starts to regrow. The whole thing starts to come alive again. What looked previously woody now suddenly becomes fleshy looking. And that also then shows you that the orchid doesn't require as high humidity levels for the velamen to do what it is supposed to do. I hope that you're still here <laughs> and I hope that what I'm saying is making sense. <laughs> if you have any, any questions, stop the video and just type away, please. This, like I said, this is a subject that I see every day. I love watching my roots and this is something where I also go bonkers over. Clearly, I'm still talking <laughs> because it all happens on the daily, even when the orchid isn't in bloom. So yes, there are plenty more examples that maybe you can think of as well with regards to how the layman performs when it absorbs or repels water as opposed to suddenly the layman absorbing water and it can differ from orchid to orchid to orchid and I'm going to encourage you to also list a few more examples. I've given one Brassavola versus Holcoglossum kimberlianum. I just happen to have these two in my collection but these are the examples I can give based on what I'm trying to tell you and I hope I'm getting my point across. So I have addressed everything that I observe from Valaman radicum as I go about my collection on the daily. I also decided that this would fit really well into the Orchid Lingo series, which should come from layman's terms, and I didn't want to overcomplicate things. But I wonder if you are going to look at your collection and your aerial roots when you miss them in a different way after watching this video. I would love to know your thoughts. I wonder if you thought, well, this was just ridiculous. <laughs> I told you that orchid lingo is gonna be like, duh, or a chuckle, or you just scratch your head and say, oh, she's lost the plot. And yes, when it comes to Belenum radicum, I do lose the plot because I just am so fascinated by it. So I wonder if I have piqued your curiosity. I look forward to reading your comments, good, bad or indifferent. Please leave them below. Let me know what you think. 
let me know if this kind of makes you go to your collection and go, I've got to try this. And then eventually, maybe let me know your observations. And please, if I said anything that you consider off, wrong, not making sense, contradictory, leave that in the comments as well. I'm not here to say what I say is gospel. No way. I'm here to explain terms based on what I observe, based on my fascination, and I'm always happy to have other opinions get the dialogue going. So, comments are open. Type away and let me know what you think. If you've made it this far, thank you very, very much. I really, really appreciate your time. I appreciate your support. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please. Stay safe and take care. Bye.